You're back. I'm afraid you can't handle it. So, I heard you helped take over Nelson from the Legion. Glad to see someone making a difference around here instead of just complaining. I don't have any supplies. Good work. Isn't the gal that defeated the Legion at Nell? Oh man, awesome! The competition is still going strong. Keep it up. Hey everybody, look lower than a feral ghoul's IQ. See you. Sterling, first recon. Can't say I've seen you before. I'd remember if I had. Got a good memory for faces, landmarks and such too. Comes with practice, that's all, and a lot of scouting from place to place. I call her the Long Caribbean. Didn't always have the scope, I added that myself. Been shooting with her so long, couldn't bring myself to toss her away. Would have felt guilty to part with the old girl. The other snipers used bolt action, but Gorbets reckoned it didn't matter none if I was different, so long as I could hit my targets. As a matter of fact, it's funny that you'd ask. A couple nights back, I was on watch in the yard. Got myself a habit of looking all around, not just where I'd expect to find trouble. Old habit, but it saved my hide on occasion. Around about one in the morning, I spied some lights in the control tower. And every time I ask about it, they tell me. No trouble at all. That light is mighty consistent. Always there at 1 a.m. Might be worth a look. Used to be a ranger. One of the first they sent out east back before we took the dam. Observation and reconnaissance. We took the lay of the land, checked out the locals, and kept ourselves inconspicuous. A couple friends of mine were the first to scout the dam. That was back in 73, if I recall. A lot of those rangers are dead now. Vegas always chewed men up. It's just a little more literal nowadays. Well, that wasn't really a matter of choice. Got myself caught by legionaries up near Malpe. They had themselves some fun with me. Mangled my hands and feet pretty good. Wasn't much good with the pistol after that. Wasn't gonna be trekking across the waste on any more long scouts, either. Caesar's boys figured I wasn't going anywhere after what they'd done to me. So they didn't bother tying me up. I crawled out of there on my elbows and knees. Must have looked a sight. Then I rolled down an embankment into the Colorado. 
I guess I had a mind to drown rather than give Caesar's boys the satisfaction of killing me. But a couple of rangers happened to be watching from across the river. They jumped on in and pulled me out of there. Lucky break, they said. Going on six months now, but I reckon we'll be moving out soon enough. Can't talk about the details. Till then, we'll man the towers and keep an eye on the fiends. We've had more... The whole thing smells of Caesar to me. Of course, that's just guesswork. But I still bet a few caps he's stirring up the locals against us. Never been a big fan of gangs like the Fiends, boss. I'm glad they're gone. Got a second to talk, boss? Meeting Corporal Sterling. Well, it kind of got me thinking. Here's a guy that's been beat all to hell, right? I mean, he could have retired from the service. But instead, he signs back on and does what he can. You think he did the right thing? so boss because I remember a time when a lot of people stuck to their duty no matter what it ended with nuclear bombs falling on my hometown after the fire I knew my sister and I couldn't stay at Hidalgo Ranch anymore the refugees still wanted me dead they even put a bounty on me I remember how scared Rafaela was I told her if she came with me we'd see the vaqueros she used to love the rodeo especially the trick wagon we figured maybe we could find help in Mexico City. We were young. We didn't know what had happened, really. We didn't understand about the bombs. I don't think it was as hard hit as D.C. or Bakersfield. But it was bad enough. By the time we got there, the city was a radioactive ruin. Still, the city was full of looters already forming into the beginnings of Raider tribes. Crime was bad before the war. But now, it was a nightmare. We were living like scavengers, scraping by on what little food we could find, always looking for medicine for my burns. And then, of course, the radiation started to kick in, turning me into this handsome devil you see before you. You're a poet of understatement, boss. But there were moments it was almost worth it. I still remember finding that novelty costume shop. I was just looking around for something I could slice up to wrap my burns when I saw the vaquero outfit hanging on the rack like it hadn't been touched. I took it, not like anybody else needed it, you know, and wore it back to our camp. Rafaela laughed for the first time since the bombs had fallen. It was. I started to build up a legend. Sometimes it headed off to home. But most of the times it just started more. Young punks looking to prove themselves would come looking for me. But my eyes were sharp and my guns were quick. For a while it seemed like we might even survive there. Until... Until Rafaela. She went out to find some food one day. I was sick so I stayed at our camp. I guess it must have been the beginning of radiation poisoning. Anyway, it was supposed to be safe. But some raiders happened to pass through where she was scavenging. I won't speak of what they did to her. When I found her body, the only way to recognize her was this funny little scar on her knee from when she was a little girl. Terrible doesn't begin to cover it, boss. I let my whole family down. First the ranch, now Rafaela. I was the last Tejada. I guess maybe I went a little crazy then. I took my guns and went back to that market. I didn't have many bullets, but I had enough. After the raiders were dead, I salvaged what I could from the store. I was tired. I just wanted to be alone forever. I left Mexico City behind. I made my way out to the Gulf Coast. Eventually, I found an old Petro Chico refinery nobody had claimed. I stayed there for a little while, and I thought a lot about my life. I thought about the guns I'd lived by and what they'd gotten me. I decided my guns hadn't gotten me anything, and it was time to give it up. I took off the old vaquero outfit and put on a Petro Chico jumpsuit. The name tag said Miguel, so I started using the name myself. 
Eventually, I made it to Arizona. That's our story, boss. Looks like the war is ratcheting up. I hear... What's new? Right now? I'm sure pissing off a ruthless warlord with a tribe of fanatically devoted warriors was a good move. How could it not be? It was your idea. Sure, Bob. What's new? A few years. We get there and I turn around and... I go to grab him out of the... He shuts himself. They do it a lot, the Legion. Anyway, that was the first time. Right now, I'm back. Yeah. A few years. We... Like... Was. Nobody knows who's gonna win, Legion or NCR. Might not make much of a difference around here. Don't worry, boss. I'm sure the sudden tension in the air is just a thunderstorm. Right behind you. What can I do for you, boss? Hey, boss. Can I ask you something? What do you think of guys like Ranger Andy? I mean, guys who have a world of experience doing what they do, but have to give it up because they're getting old and slow or too injured. Maybe, yeah. I guess you got a point there. Not really, boss. No. I left everything when I left Mexico. My home, my family, my name, even my face. I know it's surprising, boss, but I wasn't always this handsome. As far as the world knows, I was Miguel, and I was okay with that. I headed north for a while and ended up in Tucson. Not Tucson, by the way. Things were good there. Well, maybe not good, but better than Mexico City, anyway. I found myself a little shack started fixing things. Oh, well, sure, boss. I was always good at fixing things. Some I fixed for the town, some I fixed for other people, some I fixed just for the hell of it. It's a better way to use your hands than killing. And even then, I wasn't getting any younger or faster. I lived there for a long time, kept it myself, didn't get into any fights. Hell. The only reason I even kept my guns away was professional pride. Getting there, boss. I'd been in Tucson. The locals can call it Tucson all they want, but it's Tucson, damn it. About 75 years when she showed up. Pretty thing you ever saw, boss. Maybe it was just a trick of my senile brain, but I swear she looked just like my Rafaela. Her name was Claudia. She ended up taking work at one of the brothels in town. I never went to her, of course. How could I? But I looked after her in my own way. 
This was a long time ago, before Caesar's Legion pacified Arizona and brought the Raider tribes to heel. A tribe came into Tucson one day. More a gang, really. Dirty Dave and his six brothers. They were looking for bullets, and I sold some to them. I figured if I did that, they'd leave town before they tore it up too much. No, boss. No, they didn't. As I was saying, I hope they'd leave the town in peace. Instead, they decided to stop at Claudius' brothel to take the edge off. I don't know which one of them got rowdy first, but by the time I heard the screams and got my guns, it was too late. They shot up the brothel, killed four girls, and taken Claudia for their sport. I went after Dave and his brothers. They had a head start, but they slept nights. I didn't. It took me three days to catch up to them. Claudia was dead when I got there. They put a bullet in each of her eyes. I couldn't do anything except the Avenger, just like Rafaela. I charged into the middle of their camp and started firing. Two of them were dead before they knew I was there. The other five, though, they shot the shit out of me. I would have died, I think, if I wasn't so full of rage. By being a meaner old cuss than the rest of them, boss, I wanted to keep living until they weren't. So I just kept shooting until they were all dead. I was in pretty bad shape in the end, though. I don't know how long I laid there with the sun baking me and the buzzers chomping at me. Eventually, I got the strength to start moving. Some long time after that, I managed to drag my carcass back to town. When I recovered, more or less anyways, I left Tucson and headed west. I ran into Tabitha at Black Mountain, and well, the rest you know. I swore I was done with the gunslinging life. I was too old, too slow, and too beat up to protect anyone anymore. I thought I was done forever, but after traveling with you, I realized I've always had my doubts. About whether I still had what it took to carry my pistols proudly, to use them to do what's right. And now that I've been traveling with you for a while, you made me realize that I could still do that. Maybe I'm not as tough as I used to be, but my brains can make up for that. And my hands are still quick enough. It's time to put the guns back on. You can bet on that, boss. I expect to be off. I'm sure you'll be fair and equitable. What's up? See you around. 